Hi everybody and welcome to How To from TDP.ie I'm Robbie Thornton, founder of TDP and today we're going to tackle a small topic uh, with LinkyCU and uh, we're not being paid to do this, just want to let everybody know we're just doing these videos and choosing what topics to do uh, from requests from customers and our own experiences so I'll push on now and basically what we want to discuss with you today is how to install uh, link G4X software or G4 Plus would be similar so that you can download a data log from a car that we have previously mapped uh, and send us the data log so that we can find out how the car is running and possibly help you should you have any technical difficulties because uh, we spend an awful lot of time uh, remotely connecting to people's computers to install software to install uh, so, yeah, so, so we install the software and then we spend our time downloading data logs, sending them to ourselves uh, where the customer could do this. So we're hoping that some of the customers will be computer savvy enough. They'll have a computer and they might be able to do some of this. So we'll get straight into it. So first thing you need to do is go to the Link ECU website and then go to support. Go to so, support PC Link downloads and download the latest version of PC Link. Okay, uh, I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. And there we go, it's downloaded already. So I'm going to show in folder and start to install it. So it will install like this very simply. One thing I will say to you. Uh, I'm just going to call it demo because I already have versions of Link G4 installed here. Do not in get the USB cable cable connected at this stage. Just do not connect your USB cable um, because it will Windows will recognize it, but not as the correct thing, and it will basically block the drivers from being installed now during the install process of Link G4. So here we are in the driver completion wizard. Uh, and if you've already plugged your USB into your ECU and powered up your ECU to your laptop or computer, it's going to ruin this phase. So now the software is installed and we've got a shortcut on our desktop, I hope. Yep, here we go. We have a shortcut on our desktop. Now that it's installed, um, I'm just going to delete the install file uh, from my desktop so I don't click on the wrong thing. So now we have the software installed and we run the software. So this is the first time ever running the software. First thing you should probably do is go to connection, make sure it's in auto, and the baud rate is at 115 200, and click OK. Now you can connect your USB cable and power up your ECU. So we'll just do that now. Okay, so now it's found the ECU, and it's now opened the map that's on the ECU. So the first thing I'll say to you now is you're alive in an ECU, you can change things. You could go in here and accidentally inadvertently change things in the fuel map or in the ignition map or whatever. So first thing I would say before you do anything, you should go file, save as, uh, maybe on your desktop if it's your own car, create a file or create a folder, should I say, to put some files in uh, my car. And in that folder, give your uh, file that you're downloading um, basically a name, probably your own name, so if you're sending it to us we'll be able to identify it and when you download it, the date would be good, so it's um, the 1st of September isn't it? God, Jesus, the year is just flying away. Yeah. Now you have the map, so now if you inadvertently change anything and I'm going to change some stuff on purpose here watch I'm just going to take all these and I'm going to just do plus 20 which is crazy but you get this big spike here we're going to pretend we forgot we did that now and we'll show you how to um, show you how to find that you accidentally changed something later so let's pretend that I did that by accident didn't realize so what we're really here though to do is to download a uh, data log so if we go to logging and go ECU log file download Hopefully there's some data in here. Yep, there's one file. So we click on that. These are all the parameters that are actually logged in the CSU. Quite a few, uh, 57 at a high data rate. We will do another video on 
how to set up logging, um, what you should log, why you should log it, and at what rate. And we'll probably do that as our next video, actually. Then we can, after we've done that, well, then we'll do another video, um, which will talk to you about how to read the data um, and interpret the data that you get out of your ECU yourself before you have to contact us. So, okay, getting off topic, back to download the thing. Highlight your log file. If there's more than one, highlight them all or highlight the most recent one or whatever one you want to download and click on the download key. So that downloads that. When it's finished downloading, we'll give it a file name. Okay, it's just about done, pretty quick. The download speed on G4X is improved over G4 Plus. So you see a log. Again, we'll call it my car. You would call it your name. It would be good to say, oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Let's just go to my desktop and put it into my car folder, my car. And uh, probably would be good to put the date in again. So now you can open it and have a look at it. But more importantly, if we close this and we go to our desktop, in my car folder, you now have two files. These are the two files you should send to us if you want us to look at them because it gives us the information about the map on your car at the time and the logging. So we can compare them and see what's going on, tell you if there's a problem, a sensor drifting, a sensor failed, your car is in good health, bad health, needs to be brought in to be checked or worked on or something like that. But really speaking, most people only come to us when they have an absolute problem like a misfire or something like that. So. I would say uh, the best thing is then to send those two by email or if they're too big for that Dropbox or something else I'll leave that up to yourselves everybody else uses different type cloud data now we can have a quick look we're not good the purpose of this video is not to talk about um, interpreting the data but we can have a quick look if you go to general log you will see here sorry something a view that got clicked on by accident so you go to general log you will see this is the log it was very simply done on our engine simulator on the bench so there's not much data in it just some uh, fluctuations in RPM and boost pressure and stuff like that and um, we could add to it um, a load of other things that are common like maybe we want to see what the engine temperature was um, engine coolant temperature no oh, maybe it's not logged in that uh, TPS main, TPS sub, maybe TPS delta, rate of change of the throttle. They are logged. We can have a look at them. They don't change much because uh, it's just sitting here on the bench. But all the data is there. Uh, you can see at what time during the log it occurred. You can check, um, you know, a boost pressure versus your RPM. You can check what your RPM is. And all those sorts of things but basically we are going to do a full video on what should be logged and we'll do another full video on how to interpret log data and we'll use some actual data from a car that's been on a racetrack or drifting or something like that so we can show you what to look for uh, for a good performing car um, but now we go back to the pressing point is you are live in an ECU that you may not have been using before and you may have changed something so how do you find that out well, the best thing to do is we'll forget that we actually changed something and we'll go to compare. But you've got your map saved before you changed absolutely anything. So if you open that map in compare mode to the ECU now, we see if anything comes up in red. Oh, there we are. The ignition's coming up in red. Oh, the ignition table is coming up in red. And I'm just going to change back view here. So, oh, look, all this is highlighted in red. That means it's different. Okay, so it's now showing you that you have inadvertently changed something. But that's okay because we haven't done a control save to the ECU because we haven't do held down the control key and pressed S, which forces the ECU to remember the data on your laptop at the time. We haven't done that. We have simply done uh, downloaded the log. So what we can do is we can literally turn off the ignition switch. We can load another file. And I'm just going to do this to make sure that you know that there is nothing going on funky here. So I load a base file. Oh, it needs to be a G4X base file. Um, 
Okay, load a base file. So now we have a different base file loaded. My computer seems to be going slow while making the video. Oh yeah, and it's all red. But if we cancel the compare, Cancel the compare. Okay, so we've got a different base file loaded. So now if you turn your ignition back on again, that base file we just loaded will be overwritten. The map that's on your ECU will come back in uh, uh, onto your PC. And then if you do a compare, or a file on the desktop, my car, my car file, we'll be able to see there we are absolutely nothing in red so that's one really good way of comparing your reference file to the car file that's on the car to check or on the ECU for your car to check that there nothing has changed and that you haven't accidentally caused yourself a problem by connecting and I think this is very important because the amount of times in the past we have found that somebody has inadvertently changed something very simple but very important say like in fuel main fuel setup they've changed this master fuel number and the car just won't run anymore so it's really really important to make sure that you don't change stuff by accident only come into your ECU and do what you're meant to do like download your data log change your particular parameter and leave again if you're doing so if you're changing a parameter and you want it saved you have to go control s but if you are only taking the data logging out of the ECU never go control s because then that won't change the setup so that really concludes um, what we're doing here you can close compare mode and we're out of compare mode you can disconnect from your ECU it'll ask you do you want to save or store before closing I would save but I may not store so I would save to here and I go my car and I'd go my car end log download. Now, these files are very, very small inside. They're not really going to clog up your computer. So we'd encourage you to save as many versions um, of, your, of the map on your car every time you connect to it before and after. Do I want to store it to the ECU? Well, the answer actually is no. And now it's closed. So turn off my ECU and there you have it so quick recap we have now seen how to install the software we know the trick about not connecting the USB cable when the software is uh, not installed because it will block the USB port and we know the uh, procedure for downloading the log and we know the procedure for checking if we have corrupted the file so that is uh, the end of this night how to and I hope you found some of it useful and thank you very much for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.